thanks as I sorry as I always do give him thanks for the goodness and the grace that followed me today the token of my goodness is that when I look and I look around and see my family is still here with me more importantly I see the church of brethren is still in the land of living with us so uh, it's a token of the goodness of God and, his mercy, God. and the mercy that um, he has caused to follow me that I am still in the land of living and I am not yet cut off. He has forgiven me of my trespasses, praise God, and has delivered me from the various evil seen and unseen. And before we go any further, I'm just going to ask if Overseer is on board, Overseer, can you hear me? Or can you unmute your mic? No. Overseer is not here? No. Okay, the Lord bless you. Right, steady. Yeah. Uh, could you open up in prayer for me? Hallelujah. Praise God. To God be the glory. Our loving, heavenly, and righteous, eternal God creator of heaven and earth, life giver, life saver. Thank you for your goodness and your mercies towards us. Thank you for sparing our lives to see another day. Thank you that you have been with us. We know you've been with us because of the breath that we breathe. Lord, we know you, you gave us this day and we were, were able to breathe the breath Lord of life, and we want to thank you. We are eternally grateful that you saw it fit to lend us another day. And as we come, Lord, to hear the dropping of your words, we ask that thou will be with us. We know you are with us. And so, Lord, we just leave ourselves in your mighty hands and ask you to take full control Lord, we cannot do anything without you. We have tried to do it and we have failed miserably. Lord, we have tried to live our lives our own way and do our own thing and be our own person, but we fail, Lord. So many times we end up in tears. We end up, Lord, crying. We end up, Lord, running back to you. And so as we come tonight, Lord, one more time, Lord, you have allowed us to come together to hear your word. We ask that thou will bless us. We ask that thou will cover us. And Lord, open our understanding that the words which we hear will not fall on deaf ear. Oh God, but it will fall, Lord, in our hearts. Hear the prayers we make this evening. And those who are not here, I ask that thou will send portion to them. Lord, those of us that are gathered, we ask that thou will help us to listen attentively and receive in our spirit. Lord, we realize we could not have, oh God, come this far without you. And Lord, God, a charge to keep we have and a God to glorify. Bless our dear brother Leroy as he would teach for us tonight, oh God, through the inspiration of your word. Help him not to do it because he, he knows the word and he can do it. But help him to do it, Lord, because you give him the ability and you will help him to, Lord, share your word. Bless your children as we listen. And as we, oh God, come together, Lord, we will keep our minds and our hearts on you so that we will be filled up and blessed of you. Have your own sweet way, we pray, as we tell you thanks in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, bless you, stay steady. I'm going to ask for one more prayer. I'm just going to ask our... Mother Dolly to just pray. The reason why I'm asking 
is that um, we are experiencing a change. There's a change in uh, things around us, in our environment, you know, and various circumstances, whether it be personal or uh, domestical or even international. We have a new king, we have a new prime minister, and we don't know what is in store, but we do know according to the word that there are certain things that's happening, it is determined by God. So we want to ask God that he will continue to keep us from the evil of this world and that we will hold fast that which we already have and not let go. Mother Dolly, could you just pray uh, for us on that um, situation, on that terms? In Jesus' name, Mother Dolly, please. Is she there? Mother Dolly? Uh, oh, praise God. Can you all hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, praise God. I was turned off. Oh, but bless her, bless her. Thank you, Lord. Most righteous and eternal Father of oh God, Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we come to you this evening, O oh God, giving you thanks and praise for your loving kindness and your tender mercies towards us. We want to thank you for the privilege that we have, O oh God, that one more time we can be gathered together, O oh God, even to learn more about you. Lord, we are not tired of learning, O oh God, from you, O oh God, because you have the word of life. You come, O oh God, is to give us life and life more abundantly. And Lord, we want to commit even a service into your hands. We ask, dear God, for your leadership. We ask for your guidance. We ask for your inspiration, O oh God. We know, dear God, that times and seasons, O oh God, they change. And Lord God, we cannot put our trust in man whose bread come out of their nostrils. But Lord, we put our trust in the living God. And so God, we want to thank you, dear God, for keeping us thus far through the changing times, oh God, and season you have been faithful to us. Lord, when many were fearful during the pandemic season, Dear God, Lord, you were faithful in that you kept us. Despite, oh God, some were, were affected, Lord. Lord, it didn't take us out as it were. But Lord, you preserve us. And Lord, we want to thank you for your faithfulness, oh God. We pray, Heavenly Father God, that you would, oh God, bless our service, oh God. Lord God, we don't know about tomorrow, we don't know about the future, but one thing we do know, oh God, is that Lord, whatsoever we commit unto you, Lord, you're able to keep against that day. We know that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And we want to thank you for your promises towards us. We can depend upon it, oh God, even as Lord, we saw, the rainbow just recently, <laughs> Lord God in the sky. We know that your covenant keeping God. There are signs in the and Lord in these times, oh God, and you said we would see many things, oh God. And Lord, we want to continue to trust you, oh God, where we cannot trace you. We want to, oh God, look onto the hills from whence come at our help. You are our helper. You are the strength of our life. You have been our guide thus far, O oh God. And through many dangers, toils, and snares, hitherto you have brought us. And Lord God, we pray that, that Lord God, nothing will shake us, O oh God, because you said, Lord God, we must not be shaken by word, O oh God, or, O oh, oh God, and Whatever it is, Lord, you tell us we should stand firm in Amen. you, O oh God. Amen. Lord God, we thank you that your word is our weapon. And the weapons of our warfare, 
they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We pray, O oh God, that in these times we would seek you more than ever, Lord, that you would help us to be as a wise virgin, O oh God, <laughs> not just having a lamp, but God having, hallelujah, ha having oil in our lamp, Amen. oh God. Lord, the bridegroom may come in any time, and if we are not watchful, God, we could miss it like the foolish virgins. But we are asking you, Lord, to help us to make ourselves ready, oh God, waiting on you, oh God. We commit, oh God, even the one minister in tonight, we pray you will anoint him, you, from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. We pray you will grant him utterance, O oh God, and unction in the spirit. And Lord, that he will speak as an oracle of thine, as we commit him and the rest of us, Lord, and those who will be hearing us far and near, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the blessed Holy Ghost, we give you thanks. Amen and amen. 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 Lord bless you, Mother Dolly, for the prayer. Lord bless you, Mother Edwards, for the prayer that has, you both have offered up unto the Lord. Praise God. And we, as we sit and we would uh, minister one to the other, let us have in our hearts, praise God, the, sacri the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Let us continue to give God thanks for his goodness and his mercies towards us. Uh, um, I'm going to ask Sandra if she could give me a share of the, uh, sorry, what's on my screen? So if we could share my screen for me, please. Is it a situation? Have you got it? Uh, hang on just a minute. I'll leave the room one day. All right. Have you... Uh, can you see it, Sandra? No. You can't? No. Uh, you have to give me the ability to, to share. Uh -huh. You just double check again. All participants. Share, yeah, it's all there. Try can it. you see my screen? No. Mm -hmm. Let well, me make it come. I'll see if that helps. Just, just a minute. Uh, okay. Well, basically, just um, just bear with us a minute, so, um, brethren. Right. Uh, right. If I click on well, my PowerPoint, can you see my screen now? No. Mm -hmm. Hang on. Uh, let's, let's, uh, my video is up. Um, my PowerPoint is up. Can you see? Happy. And you've got you've pressed the green box down that says share screen. Have share you got screen. that? Um, okay. Can you? Right. Can you see me yes, now? Yes, yes. Can you see me now? Yeah. Well, I can see your, I can't see your video, but I can see your screen. Oh, you can see my video. Can you see my... I can see your desktop. Screen. Now I can see it, yeah. Doctrine of Men. Okay. Lovely, yeah. Right. So I am going to... Brother Pat, I'm going to be asking you to help me out today. To sure. Read you. Right. Brethren, we are living in trying times. And once again, I greet you all in the wonderful um, name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We have a new king. We have a new prime minister. We have a new king who, who believes, praise God, in previous conversations that he has had or made that he believes in what is called multi-faith. So he is he, he, not only just a Christian, 
He's also a Buddha, Buddhist. He's also a Muslim and whatever religion you can talk, think about. He believes in multi-faith. And by having multi-faith, he believes also everybody, whatever they believe, have access to God. Uh, our topic is based on the Jezebel spirit or the spirit of Jezebel in the church. Now that the queen has departed from this life, the king has become the head of the Church of England. So he would have to, uh, everything that is regarding to the responsibility of the church or the preaching of the church or the doctrine of the church basically comes through him. Jesus's prayer in St. John 17 says this, I pray that you would keep me, keep them from the evil of the world, that you don't take them out, but that you will keep them, Lord, from the evil of the world. And when we examine that, or if we were to examine that, we have to look upon the teachings and the doctrines and the philosophy of men, and that we should not allow them to take preeminence in our church or in our ministry. Now, Christ, the oldest, the head of the church, will say unto the angel of the church that he had somewhat against them, in this particular case, the Thyatira church, and that because he allowed Jezebel, praise God, not only to prophesy, but to teach, praise God, and to practice idolatry. The message we have to the church as a ministry, as, a, as small as we are, we need to understand that the only doctrine Praise God, that we should give ourselves totally to is the doctrine of God, the doctrine of Christ, the doctrine that Christ, God has, the doctrine that Christ, Christ teach, which is the same thing, the doctrine of the Spirit of God. Amen. So we have the doctrine of God, doctrine that is the same doctrine that Christ holds. And it's the same doctrine that the Holy Ghost holds, because these three are one, the three agree in one. And we also need to understand, and this is the, 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 the warning that we have, we would um, put towards the church, the caveat we would put towards the church, is that there is but one God, and it is only God we should listen to, because in God or in Christ, he has the fullness, he, in him is the fullness of the Godhead and the fullness of what God has established. I ask that you pray for us, the ministry, that as we would stand in the stead of Christ on, for, on your behalf, that the things that we would teach, praise God and minister, would be beneficial to you, you will be edified and that as you apply them to your lives, as we apply them to our lives, we will eventually make heaven our home. And that is my sincere wish and desire that as I stand as one of the ministers in the gospel outreach ministry, that the words that we would teach, that I would teach and preach and minister, and more importantly, live by, praise God, will encourage you as brethren 
to live for God and that you will be true lights, true examples of the scriptures that God has afforded us to, to minister. I give God thanks, bless his name for the wonderful, excellent teaching that we have received on Sunday. It was a tremendous blessing. And I ask that you would continue to pray for our Elder Grant, despite of what he's going through or has been going through, he will still look to the hills. Hallelujah, bless his name from whence his help comes from. And tonight I just like to draw your attention to the fact that we in endeavor to show to you what God says and not what man says. Praise God. We will teach and we will preach. Praise God. The doctrine of Christ, the gospel of Christ, because this is the power of God unto salvation. I'm just going to ask Brother Pat to help me out with the reading. Praise God. And we're going to start here. We're still talking about the spirit of Jezebel. And I heard <laughs> in, um, in Mother Dolly's prayer and along with Steady, the sign over the rainbow sign, two rainbows, praise God, um, over this Buckingham Palace on the announced when she passed away. And as far as I'm concerned, it is God saying that he rules in the affairs of men. I don't think it was raining at the time, but the rainbow came anyhow. So let us continue praying that the we will continue to have liberty to minister God's word. Amen, as we're doing right now. Lord bless you. Brother Pat, could you um, read for us the opening slide, please? Doctrine of Men, Colossians 2, verse 8 to 10. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Amen. Lord bless you. Here Paul is teaching the Colossian brethren, the apostle to the Gentiles, is warning the Gentiles. And last week we looked on the fact that the Gentiles were given um, a, a warning whereby they were not to, to, to eat anything strangled or anything to um, keep themselves from the spirit of fornication and the other fornication, adultery, spiritual adultery, and that we should keep ourselves from idols. Jesus, as I said earlier, that Jesus mentioned praying that the church would be kept from the evil of this world. And even though we are in the world, we are, should be kept from the evil and the evil that is in the world is a doctrine of men because the doctrine of men is based on how men thinks and not on how God thinks because the Bible declares that God's thoughts is higher than our thoughts. So in order to be su successful believers, successful Christians, we need to keep ourselves, praise God, from the philosophy of men which is a doctrine, vain deceits, which is think of himself, and the various traditions of men. Brother Earl, last, last Tuesday and even Sunday, he was spoke about um, having nine night services for the dead. Amen. Which is basically a tradition of men. It is not in the scriptures, 
but you know we got to be careful that we get ourselves entangled in the various traditions and the rudiments of the world now but what paul encourages us is that we now especially in these days in these times that we're living in we now need to hold fast to the doctrine taught by christ because christ has the fullness of the doctrine of God, gospel of God, doctrine of God, teachings of God. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And we are made complete, or we will be made complete, praise God. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, the only person that can make us clean and clean so clean that we can make heaven our home is Christ that's why he shed his blood that's why he took on um, um, flesh to condemn sin in the flesh and if we follow his doctrine praise God and you're going to see that later on if we follow his doctrine he will make us overcomers praise his name beware lest any man spoil you and this is my desire, and I'm sure those of us that teach in the gospel outreach in unity is that is our desire that to make you brethren pure and clean after the statue of Christ so that you'd not be spoiled. Praise God. Be awareless. Any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions, tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. We need to teach you continuously regarding Christ. Next slide. Right. Last week we looked on Jezebel being a false prophet, the character of Jezebel, the teacher of false doctrine. And we're gonna kind of stick with that part this week also and the idol worshiper so we're still in the the, the 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 spirit of jezebel in the church because what we need to understand is that it is christ who's going to purge the church praise god and take the church out of the churches so to speak so we 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 have as a ministry praise god we have a min a, a uh, a responsibility to teach you properly and teach you that you may have confidence in God and not men. And as we, as we'd like Paul would say, follow me as we follow Christ. So that's the basic of it. Now, in Christ's writing to the church, there's a statement he made. He says. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. The Spirit of God is in the world today and in the church in order to lead the church into a position whereby we are at one with the Spirit. Jesus prayed and said that they may be one even as we are one. The one is coming that we are in agreement. We are not Christ, but we will become sons of God. We are not the Holy Spirit, but we will be in unity with the Spirit of God. We are not God. Christ is not God, but we are all unified together by one Spirit. The unity of the Spirit. Together we stand, united we stand, and divided we fall. And this is our position, this is our role, our, 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 our um, edit to make sure that we are in unison with the Spirit of God. Brother Pat, please. Unity of the Spirit, Ephesians 4 to verses 3 to 6. Endeavouring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, 
even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Amen. The Lord bless you for that. One of the warnings that we have from the scriptures and we are told is that we are to be in unison with the Spirit of God. If we are in unison or united with the Spirit of God, we have a bond, and that bond is peace. Romans 5 verse 1 says, and being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Now, if we have that bond that bounds, bounds us together, the bond of peace bounds us with the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God. Bound, the bond of peace bounds us with Christ, praise God. And the bond of peace bounds us with God the Father. And the bonding that can happen because as Paul is saying in verse 4 of Ephesians 4, there is one body and there is one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. So all of us have the same calling, praise God, because we're all called to serve God. And he goes on to say, one Lord, the Lord, one faith, and one baptism. The warning I would tell the church today, us as a ministry, there's a change and part of the change is that they speak of what is called multi-faith. In other words, more than one faith. But the Bible teaches one faith. The one faith which is in Christ Jesus, one faith which God's established, that no man cometh unto the Father but by the Son. Everybody who comes to God, praise God, is drawn by God, and they're, they're drawn through Christ, praise God. And when they come to Christ, they come into one baptism. So that is the order that we have, we have held all these years, whether we've been saved for two years, 20 years, or, or how many years, we have held on to the faith that makes us to be at peace with God, brings us in what is called the bond of peace, or calls it. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. And then he clarifies it in verse six. One God, and one father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. So we are, as Jesus prayed, as we are one, even so Lord, let them be one. So we have to be one with God, the father, one with Christ, son, and one with the Holy Ghost. And that bond, there's a bond of peace. You know, when Christ came into the world, the angels spoke about peace and goodwill unto all men. That peace starts. And when Jesus was going, he said, my peace I leave with you, not as the world giveth. Praise God, give I unto you, but that which he, Christ, the King of peace, would give unto us. So this is what we need to hold on. We must be in unison with the Spirit, for the Spirit, it is the Spirit through our Christ, through the Spirit, speaks to the church and tells the church or the angel of the church how to behave, what he should drop, and how to get better. One God, one Father of all, 
and Father of all, who is above all and through all, through all and in you all. Lord bless you, sorry. Israel had a command, and Israel was in to um, was in the wilderness, having left Egypt, and they're now in the wilderness. And as they were led in the, in the wilderness by Moses, praise God, they are getting close to the point where they will cross over into Canaan. And if you know the chronological history of Canaan, praise God, and the time and the time of Abraham going into Canaan. It's a period of time where they worship many gods. Praise God. They had the God for the sun. They had God for fire. They had a God for, you name it, they had a God for it. But they were now going into the promised land. And as they go into the promised land, here's a warning that God would say through Moses. And the warning is here written in Deuteronomy 6 and verse 4 to establish the one true God, the one true and living God. Brother Pat, please. Deuteronomy 6, verse 4 and 5. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Deuteronomy 6, verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Right, Lord bless you, brother. I think I've typed something twice there. Never mind. Uh, you've managed to go through. The doctrine of one God is important for us to hold and to understand. We don't have three gods. There isn't three gods. I think in Isaiah 43, somewhere around there, where God told Isaiah that he searched high and low, praise God, deep and wide, and that he found no other God beside him. Praise God. To God be the glory for that. God searched to see if there's another God. And there is no other God. So before Israel goes into Canaan, praise God, he would establish that he is the one true God. Hear, O Israel, he that hath an hear, let him hear what the Spirit of God said, what the Spirit said unto the churches. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. The Lord our God. So Moses did not um, separate himself. He wanted to, Israel to know that he worshiped the same God that they are worshiping or they should worship the God that he worships. By the same token, what is written a fourth time is written for our learning. Us as ministers, we believe that there is, there is only one God and one Lord. The one Lord God and one Lord is one Lord. The Lord our God is one Lord. And not only that, to serve God, praise God, or to love God, praise God, and not be separated from God. He says, the Lord, 
Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. In other words, we should love God with our entire being, the whole, our whole existence, praise God, body, soul, and spirit. Whether we're in body, whether in body or whether in soul or whether with all our strength. And not only that, as we continue to walk in the love of God or loving God, we should teach them diligently. In other words, impress them, let the teaching have an impact on our children. And then as we teach that God is one and that there is one God and one God only, we should not only teach it, but we should talk it. We should not only talk it in the church, but we must talk it in, the, in our own house. We must walk in it. We must walk with it in our, in, in our homes, in our jobs. Praise God. Wherever we be, we should walk in the belief that there is but one God. And when thou liest down, we must have that. In other words, our existence, praise God, is based on the fact that God is everywhere. And that everything that we have done or, or, or we intend to do has to come through, praise God, our belief and strength in God. So that's the doctrine that Christ would bring into the church so that the church will understand and continue to work with God. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. In other words, the term baptism here is that we are actually subjected or submitted. We, we become submissive to the will of God. Bless his name. Then we go back to Ephesians chapter 4. We need to understand, I cannot emphasize it no more than what I'm doing now, is that it is important that we come to the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, who established that God is one. Some people teach that Jesus is God. Jesus is not God. He is the son of God and has become the perfect man, the example in which we should aim, we should aspire to be. Praise God. Now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. So when God looks on us, Praise God, who, 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 who have come out of his side when he was side was pierced and blood and water flow from his side. We have come from the washing of the water by the blood. And that's how we become sons of God when we become submissive to his will. Um, we're not taught, or we shouldn't be taught by every wind of that thing. Brother Pat, please. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. I pray to our Lord that as we would minister, we would not minister ourselves, but we would minister Christ. And that we would not minister with cunning craftiness and the ministry that we have would not be a ministry of deception. 
the, I think it's in First Corinthians 4, somewhere around there, speaks about handling the word of God deceitfully. I'm praying for all of our ministers and all of the all of you that as we would minister, we would not minister deceitfully or handling the word of God deceitfully. It is important that we unite in the faith of God and according to the knowledge of the Son of God, because Christ came down to reveal or to declare unto us who God is. Praise God. And he walked according to how God had ordered him to walk. Thus he became the perfect man. And that's how we would measure ourselves. We would measure ourselves that we come to the point that we are, for example, if Christ was, was six foot, praise God, we will be six foot. Amen. If Christ was, was tall and slender, we will be tall and slender. We come as, as Christ would fulfill the, 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 the will of God, we will, will be fulfilling the will of God. We don't know what image is going to be, but we know the standard that Christ holds. And this is that's where we want to be, onto the measure and stature of the fullness of Christ, that we are not tossed about by every wind of doctrine. Only Christ knows God inside out. And if Christ knows God inside out, guess what he's going to tell the church? He's going to show the church who God is, and he, church, would have to be like Christ. He says, have I been so long with you, and you have not yet seen the Father? That's what he said to Thomas. So he shows the church who is, who Christ is, or who God is, and would allow or teach that we all come up to the same stature that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sly of men and the cunning craftiness. Lord, help us not to be crafty in our delivery, whereby they lay in wit to deceive. Praise God. It is important that we become overcomers. And overcomers is something or uh, is a is a bit like remaining sanctified or uh, becoming sanctified and remaining sanctified. We travel in the world that we live in today, and there is so much are so many distractions that we want to show us, throw us off the ray or, or, or off the track and cause us to believe that, you know, in this statement, there's a common statement that we are human and we are gonna make mistakes and God must understand. Because of that sort of statement, Christ was brought into the world to show to us that if we follow him, who is the fullness of God, then we will not be stuck or be burdened down with the fact that we're human. But we must understand that there's a doctrine that says, if we follow Christ, we will be successful. The same church Christ was talking to as the overseer or the, the CEO of the church, Thyatira. He would say this to them that they should become overcome. This is the last couple of slides that we have tonight. Brother Pat, please. But unto you, I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, that is the unto you, the angel of the church and the and the brethren. As many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, 
I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Praise God. It is important that we listen to what the church or what the Holy Ghost, who is the teacher of the church, who will guide us into all truth. We should not be easily tossed or thrown off track by the doctrine of men, but we should hold fast the doctrine that is taught by Christ. It is important that we do that. We also don't need to really know the depths of Satan, but there is Satan, there's a depth of Satan, Christ is saying, because there he goes to many, many ways to see the church or so that those who would believe would be tempted and taught with a foe. But Christ is saying, I'm not going to put on you the burden, any other burden. But what he wants you to do or wants us to do by this eternal spirit, by the things that we have already learned, he's saying, hold fast that which you already have. In other words, he's saying to you, the same thing that he actually said to Paul. He said, my grace is sufficient to keep you. And if you would stay in the grace that he has given us, each and every one of us, he said, hold that which you have. Because that grace that you have, that which kept you from sinning this morning, praise God, hold it. That which kept you from sinning yesterday, hold it. Don't let go of it. Praise God. That which has kept you safe, that which has kept you protected, that which has kept you from fighting and cussing and whatever, when you are such in, in such a state whereby it will be, um, the desire to leave God is overwhelmed by the word that you find in your spirit. It says, that word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Jesus is saying to us, or the spirit of God is saying to us, hold it. Praise God. Keep that oil in your lamps. There are many in, who are going to church who are foolish. The wisdom that is inside you that causing you to stay with God, praise God, and that give you the understanding of whatever you're going through, like in Romans 8, if, if, if perils, famine, and everything hasn't stopped God from loving you, understand this. What we are going through, we are going through, but God still loves you and he still keeps you. He said he will never leave you nor forsake you. He's always with you. Jesus is saying to us tonight, praise God, that you must hold fast, hold it. Lay hold on the eternal life which is already come. He's coming back, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. You must become and overcome. Bless his name. He that overcometh. So it's a continuous thing. You overcome and you keep his work or keep his words unto the end. To him I will give power over the nations. As you hold on to God, the power that he has given you is to overcome the various 
anxieties, temptations, and disasters that will come your way, he's saying, hold it, I have given you power over them. With, you know, he said, he sent out the disciples and said, I give you power over the unclean spirits. Praise God. And, and I give you power to heal. Amen. But at the same time, also rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You have the power to overcome. It's already given to you. Hold fast to it. Cast not away the confidence that you have. Just think back and say, and look at the many victories you've had already. If you were victorious yesterday, the same God can make you victorious today. If you overcame sin this morning, you can overcome sin tonight. Praise God. He that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him I will give power over the nations. And this is what sanctification does to you. It always talks about um, the um, nations. But sanctification does this to you, and he and you shall he shall rule them with a rod of iron. That's what your sanctification does. Keeps you with a rod, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Praise God. Sorry, Pat, you read. <clears throat> Bless you. Uh, Revelations 2, verse 27 to 29. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers even as i received of my father and i will give him the morning star he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches amen amen brethren it is important that you hold the victory you had this morning. Praise God. Because that victory will also keep you through the night. The various thoughts that is contrary to the will of God that will come along your way. God has given you the rod, a rod of iron to smash them into smithereens, the thoughts, the various temptations and the anxieties and that desire to depart from the faith. God has given you the rod of iron to smash it. Praise God. And when you smash them, praise God, he will give you a morning star. In other words, you rise up and you become a bright morning star. Yes, you may think of other stuff According to the, but in this context, this is what we're doing. We're becoming a helper of your faith, causing you to be encouraged that you don't fall by the way and that you don't get shaken by every wind of doctrine that has come about. We have someone who now sits on the throne who flees in multi faith. Let us hold that one faith that will take us to glory. Praise God. Let us hold that one faith that will keep us safe. Let us hold that one faith who says he will never leave you nor forsake you. Praise God. Whether we are famine or whether there is disaster, whatever the situation, you will understand that God still loves you. Because that he, he, Christ became an overseer, because an overcomer, sorry. He became an overcomer, praise God, that when it got to him in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, not my will, but thy will be done. When you understand that as an overcome, you will find that you will have the strength. You will find a joy that is in your spirit that would want, would want to give God thanks, regardless of what you're going through. He give you the morning star, reach, look unto the hills, look to the hill from when it's coming to hell. And all this is coming through the unity of the spirit and that bond of peace 
that you have before the Spirit of God, Christ, and God the Father, and your fellow brethren. He that hath and hear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the church. I'm going to be closing with a portion of scripture which I, which I closed with last week that was given to, uh, or that inspired me to look at the scriptures because that's what the apostle of the Gentiles used. And this is it. The understanding I have of this is that scripture interprets scripture. Bible says things that happened in the Old Testament were written for our learning. The Old Testament spoke, praise God, of the, 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 the Emmanuel, God with us, the Savior. Praise God. And this is the same thing that Paul did. Just as our Jesus did it when he rose from the dead, Paul did the same thing. They went back into the scripture. Praise God. David picked up by the Holy Ghost said, Thy words have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. We need to hold fast the teachings of Christ. And then if we hold fast on the works of Christ, we will make heaven our home. Scripture interprets scripture. This is my closing slide. Brother Pat, could you read for me? Acts 28. Verse 23, and when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets, from morning till evening. <coughs> Amen. As little as we are, we've seen this scripture fulfilled amongst us. We sat on Sunday, praise God, as an example. And we sat in church and we would see the spirit of God taking our beloved brother and by the scripture, praise God, not by any commentary by men or any doctrine of men, but by the scriptures, we will see that God would use the scriptures to comfort, despite what he's going through, the mourning of his son and the the, 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 the the fighting that he would fight, he, he would face from other, other, other sources. He is comforted, and if he wasn't comforted by the scriptures, he couldn't teach the way he taught. Paul, praise God, he would not go back into Jerusalem because he's technically he's in prison in Rome. And what the Romans did, or what the Roman centurion did was give him a day where he could teach. And as he taught, he find himself also being comforted by the things that he was teaching. I would continue to pray for our brother that as he continues to give himself to the scriptures, praise God, and he would expound and testify of the kingdom of God and persuade men concerning Jesus that he will always find comfort in the law of Moses. In the scriptures, he found comfort in the scripture. Out of the prophets, he found comfort in the, in the prophets. From morning till evening, let us continue to pray, praise God, for the ministers of the gospel outreach ministry, regardless of what they are going through, that they will be steadfast unmovable, always abounding in the faith because that's how we're gonna stay strong. That's how we're gonna stay um, focused, praise God, because God will continue to love us regardless we're going through the fire, 
whether we're going through the flood, whether we're going through whatever we're going through, God is still loving us. And when they had appointed him a day, they came many into him in his lodge to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening. Regardless of what I'm gonna go through, my comfort will come from the scriptures. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The Lord bless you, may cause his face to shine upon you all in Jesus' name. Sister Sandra, bless you. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you, Brother Leroy. God bless you. Shall we praise the Lord, brethren? Praise, praise the Lord, brethren. Amen. Praise Thank the you. Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God Thank bless you. you. Thank you so much, Brother Amen. Leroy. It's, you know, it's a feat to sit and to listen, but also to the application. When you listen to you and you go through your ministry, there's certain parts of it I, I was applying. I was saying, right, okay, what did you do this morning? What was good that you did today? Yeah. It was so lovely to just sit and listen and just do an inventory. Before um, I say thank you, I'm going to be asking um, Sister Charmaine to say the closing prayer for us and give the announcement. I'm sorry to work with Sister Charmaine, but um, if you can just pray the closing prayer and also ask for the blessing as Brother Leroy was teaching for our ministers, you know, when I saw Brother Earl on Sunday and um, I see Brother Leroy time and Brother Patrick, our ministers are relentless. And I'd like you to do a special prayer because not one of them are not suffering with, in some way, shape or form. And I think this, this lesson, um, especially when it's, not minister, the, the reminder was not that the minister should not minister about over themselves, ourselves, but minister Christ, rightly dividing the word. You know, and like I said last week, and I've been saying in the last three weeks, when you finish ministering, my head goes like this, and I'm looking, follow me as I follow Christ, and it's a mean feat. So Sister Charmaine, I'm going to be asking you to pray for our ministers and I cover the brethren and close in prayer for us as well, please. Thank God, thank Jesus. It's right, eternal Father, Lord, we just at this time give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor that belongs to you. God, we thank you again for speaking to us, Lord. And again, Lord, you have directed us in the path of righteousness. Lord, for your teaching, we understand, oh God, that Lord, there's no other God but one. And through your son, Jesus Christ, Lord, we have received salvation. I pray, God, that it will help us to continue in the faith, not in the faiths, Lord. But as you taught us tonight, you reminded us again, Lord, there's one Lord, one spirit, one baptism, one Amen. God. And God, again, you stayed us minds again lord that we will watch on the prayer lest we be drawn away by oh god by the simplicity and, and the, 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 the teaching the false teaching of men the philosophy as you spoke of lord help us to be to be diligent and to be watchful at these times oh god as changes have taken place but god i pray lord that your truth will find place in our hearts Lord, this, this truth that you have taught us will abide in us, that, Lord, we'll not be carried away by the slight of men. We thank you that you have blessed us with all spiritual blessing, and you continue to, to be among us. You continue to, oh God, to anoint us. You continue to speak to us. Help us to take heed, Lord Jesus, and to, to worship you in spirit and truth. We thank you for our ministers that you have placed in the midst of us, Lord. Oh, God, without them, we will not be perfected. You say, God, the ministry is given for the perfecting of the saints. Help us, God, to cherish 
oh God, the teachings that you would have them to impart to us, Lord. Help us, oh God, to, li to listen with all diligence as they would minister the word. Oh God, we pray, God, that oh, you will strengthen them, that they will go from strength to strength. Help them not to become weary, Lord Jesus, but Lord, oh God, you will continue to, to, to cause your anointing to be upon them as they go through the, the various trials and temptation. Oh God, Lord, you have placed them, you have placed, oh God, of them into a seat, Lord God. I pray, God, they will not move, oh God, but they will wait upon you and be strong. Oh God, strengthen them that as they guide your people. Lord God, they will guide them in the path of righteousness. Bless them and keep them. We pray, God, for the overseer, Lord, that you will continue to see, you will continue to hear from you, Lord Jesus. We pray for Earl Grant. We pray for all of our ministers, Lord, as we commit them in your hands. Keep them. Oh God, help them not to move from out of Jordan, but they will wait in Jordan till your people cross over. Help them, oh God, to stand still and see your salvation. Bless them now as we commit them into your hands, dear God. Bless your people, oh God. Those who, oh God, who are sick, those who are going through the going through, those of us who have lost, oh God, help us to understand, oh God, though we have lost, we have also gained. Lord, bless us and keep us, we pray, we'll cover the saints. Help us, Lord, to stay in the light as you are your, our light. Oh God, help us not to, to depart, oh God, from your from truth, but Lord will continue to, to, to lift up the name of Jesus. Bless us now. We ask these are the mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise amen. the Lord. Amen. 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 God bless you, Sister Shaman. Sister Shaman, God bless amen. you. Praise the Lord, brethren. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We're not here for fashion. We're not here because it's a ritual. We're not here because we just, there's nothing else to do. Praise God. We're here because we have the power to overcome, to look at the mighty victories we've, we've already oh, come over, overcome. Through, through the days, those victories that we've overcome and hold those victories, praise God. This is not a form. This is not a ritual. When you come in these meetings, brethren, come with your mind and your heart open so that you can be better. Praise God. We've got, like yes. Brother um, Lira was saying, there's a new monarchy, a new king. There's a with, with new ideas and new fashion. The other day, I've never seen the queen swear. And the other day, his pen wasn't working and he swore. And I thought, oh, <laughs> oh, I did. I really did think, oh, you know, yeah. he was upset. And he, 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 he swore and he was indignant. And I thought, I'm so used to grace. And now I've got to, you know, I'm, the, the queen conducts herself in a certain manner. And this was so flippant and yeah. it unnerved me a little bit. But it's it was a reminder that we have to work out our own salvation mm -hmm. brethren, and take note of what we're learning. These are changing times. There's loads of changing. But brace yourself. And remember, mm -hmm. we have the power to overcome through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We say we're Christians, which means we're Christ like. And I'm just reiterating what our teacher said today go back to the word look at yourself at the end of the day be proud of the things that you've done to represent Christ in a Christ-like way and every time you feel something that might be burning you to do something wrong remember Christ praise God remember that you're a Christian a Christ-like person. God bless you. Sister Charmaine, <laughs> the announcements before I, I, I decide that I'm going to preach. You know? <laughs> Amanda, God bless you. God bless you. Our service starts at 1.30 onwards. We have a wonderful topic. Human sinfulness begins. Mm -hmm. Are taken from Genesis chapter 3 verses 1 to 14, Genesis chapter 4, verse 2 to 6, and 23 to 26. 
God bless. God bless you, Sister Charmaine. God bless you. And um, can we all pronounce the benediction? Thank you, Mother Dolly, for the opening prayer. Mother Edwards, for your prayer. Sister Charmaine, for your closing prayer. And Brother, Brother Patrick, for supporting Brother Leroy. And Brother Leroy, for your wonderful teaching today. God bless you. God bless you, saints. Shall we pronounce the benediction? Let the words of our mouth Love. and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength, strength and our redeemer. God bless you, brethren. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Good night. Bless you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. God willing, I see you Sunday. Wait for the countdown. Yeah, I'm going to do a countdown for that. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Good night. Bless you, Virgin. Three, two, one. Good night. God bless you. Good night.